Hello, I'm Denise Ann, an electrical engineering student of De La Salle University, Das Marinas. This is Activity 5 for Computer Fundamentals and Programming for Engineers using Python under Professor Emmanuel Longares. This activity has five parts to explore the input function, comparison operator and conditional execution, if-else structure, if-elif-else statement, and while loop. The objectives for the first part is to become familiar with the input function and to become familiar with the comparison operators in Python. Comparison operators in Python are greater than or less than, uh, not equal to, uh, equal, equal, which is also is just, just equal, and we'll have to use it in the given scenario. Now, the scenario is to use one of the comparison operators to write a simple two-line program that takes a parameter n, as input, that should be an integer, as you can see here. This is already, this will make it an integer. And placing input uh, inside it will take uh, an input from the user. Now, we have, the result should print false if n is less than 100 and true if n is greater than or equal to 100. Now, I use greater than or equal to 100 uh, to test if, n greater than 100 in which if n is greater than 100 this should be this should result to true and if not false uh, if i use less than or equal to 100 it will print true for less than 100 so that's why we use greater than or equal instead let's run it save and then as you can see it asks for a number, and our first test data is number 55. As you can see, the expected output is false, and our real-time output is false, also false. Now, the next, we'll run it again. And, and our next sample input is number 99. And the expected output is false, and the real-time uh, result is false now the next sample input is 100 it's true equal to greater than or equal as said by the scenario the it will return true it should return true if it n is greater than or equal to 100 now the next sample data Now for the next one, we have 101, which is also true, which is the same as the expected output. And the next, we'll try to enter a negative number, which is like, uh, let's try negative 5, which is false, which is also the expected output. And lastly, let's try adding a positive plus sign in front of the number and it it still uh, is the same as the expected output which is also true now for the second part uh, the objectives are first to become familiar with the input function to become familiar with con comparison operators in python and to become familiar with the concept of conditional execution the scenario is, uh, first, uh, there is the word spatifelum, which is a piece lily or white sail plant. And we imagine that our computer program loves these plants. Whenever it receives, receives an input in the form of the word spatifelum, it involuntarily shouts to the console the following strings. Spatifelum is the best plant ever. Uh, we have to write a program that utilizes the concept of conditional execution, which is that will take a string as an input and will print the sentence, yes, but the film is the best plant ever, to the screen if the input string is the big letter S, but the film, in, uh, up, and will print, uh, no, I want a big spatty film if the inputted string is a lowercase s. Now, if it doesn't match, 
has patifilum in uppercase or lowercase, uh, it will print patifilum not and then the input of the user. Now, I did run this and we'll have to use our test data. We'll have to first enter a lowercase patifilum. As you can see, uh, the expected output is, is no. I want the big spatifilum, uh, which is the same as the real-time output. The next sample input is to enter a a different uh, plant, pelargonium. It should print, the expected output is patifilum, not this input, pelargonium. Okay, so it's correct. And lastly, our next test data is, uh, 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 it should match spatifilum in uppercase, which should match the, uh, what the program wants. Okay, now as you can see, uh, it's the same. This is the same as this. That's why the program prompted it shouted yes, but if it is the best plant ever. Now for part three. Part three uh, should familiarize us with the use of if else instruction to branch the control path and to build a complete program that solves simple real-life problems. Now, our scenario is that once upon a time, there was a land of milk and honey inhabited by happy and prosperous people. The people paid taxes and, of course, their happiness had limits. The most important tax, called the personal income tax, or PIT for short, had to be paid once a year and was evaluated using the following rule. If the citizen's income was not higher than 85,528 8, 85, dollars, the tax was equal to 18% of the income minus 556 dollars and 2 cents, which is the tax relief. Next, if the income was higher than this amount, then the tax is equals is was equal to fourteen thousand eight hundred thirty nine dollars and two cents plus thirty two percent of the surplus over eighty five thousand five hundred twenty eight dollars. Our task is to write a tax calculator. It should accept the, from the user if one floating point value, which should be the income, and it should print the calculated tax next to rounded full dollars. The, it means there should be no decimal point. So we have to use the round function. Now, it's possible that it can return a zero or a negative value. So we have to take this into consideration. This is the tax calculator. Based from the test data and with the expected output, the the output should be in this form. The tax is and the tax value and then dollars. Okay. So as uh, it was said, it should uh, get from the user an input and we have to place this input value. So if ever the income is uh, has a decimal point or has cents in it, uh, we uh, the user can input it. Now, I called the 85,528 as the ceiling so because it divides the uh, income from lower to higher. Now, uh, if the income is equal, uh, was lower or equal to 85,528 the tax should be equal to 18% of the income minus $556.02. Now, we have to test if the tax is 
I don't think why did I use this? Yeah, now if the tax is less than or equal to zero, so that means uh we this part screens for the negative values of tax and zero with the tax uh will it will the tax will be equal to zero instead. Now else if the income ceiling is greater than the income is greater than the ceiling value, the tax should be equal to fourteen thousand eight hundred thirty nine dollars and two cents plus the thirty two percent of the surplus over eighty five thousand five hundred twenty eight dollars. Now the surplus is the income minus the ceiling. We'll just have to run this. Our first test data is $10,000. Now, the tax is $1,244. And we could see that this is rounded off to the full value and there is no uh, remainder or cents for this, although there is a decimal point. Now, this, uh, the real-time result is the same as the expected output so which means this is correct now let's test if a hundred thousand dollars would do this is 100 000. okay now the tax is 119,470 dollars which is also the same as the expected output so is correct um, the next one the next annual income we have to try is 1000 so yes it printed a zero result now let's try if it will uh, it will it's okay to enter a negative value Now, the, uh, it also uh, printed something when I entered a negative value, and this is also the same as the expected output, zero dollars. Okay. Now, the port for it uh, will help us familiarize with using the if, elif, l statement to find proper implementation of verbally defined rules and to test code using sample input and output. Now this program uh, helps us to test if the year input, if the user input uh, will be a leap year or a common year. Now the, since the introduction of the Gregorian calendar in 1582, the following rule is used to determine the kind of year is if the year number isn't divisible by 4, it's a common year. Otherwise, if the year number isn't divisible by 100, it's a leap year. Otherwise, if the year number isn't divisible by 400, it's a common year. Otherwise, it's a leap year. Now, uh, the code should output one of the two possible messages, which is either a leap year or a common year. But if it doesn't fall, if... Uh, into the Gregorian era, which is 1582 or higher, the code should output not within Gregorian calendar period. We have to use the not equal to and modular operators. As you can see, this, uh, this program will ask an input from the user, which is a year. And we turn this into an integer, so the uh, variable year will have an integer inside it. Now, if the given will falls under the Gregorian calendar period, which is, which is fifth, equal to 1582 or greater, it will enter this part of the, the program. If the year is divisible by uh, 4, which means it doesn't have a remainder, it's a leap year. Other uh, and this one says that if the year isn't divisible or not equal to zero, 
it's common year so it will print common year else if it isn't divisible by 100 it will print a leap year otherwise or else if the year number isn't divisible by 400 it should print a common year otherwise it will just be a leap year then it will print uh, not the Gregorian calendar period if the input is lower than the year 1582. Now let's test if test this with the test data. Now let's the first test data is 2000. The expected output is a leap year, and the real time result is a leap year. The next test data is the year 2015, and it's a common year as and it's the same with the expected output. Now, the, let's try 1999, just a common year, which is also the same as the expected output. Let's try 1996, which is uh, supposed to be a leap year. And it's a leap year. Now, let's try if uh, what happens when we enter a year that is lower than the Gregorian calendar period, which is, let's try 1580. And the program uh, outputted a not Gregorian calendar period, which is the same as the expected output. Now I've tried another variation of this uh, program, which is the cascade of if, but in if you use the cascade if statements, uh, if inside an if inside an if, we won't get to use the if, which is the objective of this exercise. So this is why I use this one. Now the last part focuses on the while loop. Its objective is to familiarize with the while loop and to reflect real life situations in computer code. Now the tutorial is a junior magician has picked a secret number. That secret number is 777 and uh, our task is to help the magician complete the code in the editor such that it will ask the user to enter an integer number which is this one and we will use a while loop here and it will should check whether the number entered by the user is the same as the number picked by the magician if it's not the num if the user enters a number n which is not the same as the magician's secret number we should see the message haha you're stuck in my loop and be prompted to enter a number again if the number entered by the user matches the number picked by the magician it should output a message saying well done muggle you are free now now th we also have to include this uh, multi-line uh, now I place the secret number seven uh, this should be the variable which is 777 and I place the multi-line function multi-line print function here and then I place uh, first so that we have a uh, I have declared at uh, the X the x variable i just place zero inside it so that it will not prompt so that it will prompt x here now since uh, this zero is not equal to the secret number it will enter this program go, uh, the block it will enter this block now this block will ask the user to for an input which is an integer value and if it's equal to the secret number it will print well done muggle you are free now else it will print haha you're stuck in my loop and as long as the, uh, the user hasn't guessed the secret number it will just repeat uh, this loop forever now let's try to enter an integer value Let's try 56. Uh, how about a negative value? Still, 
Now, if I try to enter the 777, the program has stopped. Now, let's try experimenting with this one. Put this in tab. Let's see. It's out, it's already out of the frame, and I will. I want to see if what happens if I run it. Now, it is almost the same as what I saw here inside the file, but I can't see it. I can't see what's after it. I've... Oh, it's this one. I've it moved to the next line. If I oh, so if when I resize the frame, it also moves. But so the frame is the border of the line. Oh, that's cute. Okay. Now, what if this? So, this multi line helps us uh, manipulate multi lines. We have we can enter as much input as we want, and the the frame. If I uh, print it, uh, if I place an input that is bigger than the frame it will uh, modify according to the size of the frame. And that's it for the last part of the exercise. Thank you for watching.